Now, organized labor led by Nigerian Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress yesterday made real its threat of picketing operators of the country's power sector and grounding operations following the recent increase in electricity tariff by the federal government. As they reported yesterday that the unions had sent notices of their protests to their units across the country, reconfirming with clear instructions on their modus operandi. After a successful showing yesterday, Labour demanded a complete reversal of the power sector privatisation and recovery of all disposed public electricity assets. Our Rise Business Analyst Chikan Boni joins me now to discuss these stories. Good morning to you, Mr. Chika. Hey, Always I'll be a having great you. pleasure to have very How well. Today? Thank you. Very well, thank you mm -hmm. for asking. Well, let's begin with the CBN governor's position on investor sentiment around Nigeria's FX market. What do we make of this? You know, I am um, for the for our viewers again, as was as I always say, uh, we are here for our viewers. And um the uh, principally two types of classes of investors. Um the foreign portfolio investors and the foreign direct investors. Foreign direct investors are those who bring in, you know, um, investment to a country like ours, and then they are here to stay for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, come rain, come shine. They involved in hardcore investments like manufacturing companies or other allied investments, and then stay here for the cost of their business, and then remit. Um, dividends to their home country or where they come from subsequently. Whereas foreign portfolio investors, sometimes they call them briefcase investors, are those who come in here because of the short-term opportunities um, that may arise um, 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 in the local economy. Um, for example, in, in the, the, maybe in the UK or, or, United, or US, maybe they're interested for, let me use the US, maybe interested in dollar, they're getting on their fixed deposits there, or putting money in the banking system, then maybe about 3%. So they come over here and find out the interest rate here is about 25%. So instead of staying there in the US and getting 3%, they can actually bring their money into Nigeria, change it into Naira, of course, we'll get the dollars, and then invest in the 25% interest rate, earn it. And then after the expiration of the investment, they will take it back, move the Naira back into dollar, and then take it back to the home country. So what has been a limiting factor since? Limiting factor has been the fact that one, that when they, are, they bring the dollars into Nigeria, change it to Naira, at the expiration of their short-term uh, investment in Nigeria, you know, remember they're holding Naira. Now they want to move it back to dollars, and that has been the problem. So with the stability that's coming back to the FX market now, as the CBN has, uh, governor has said, a little, they have more confidence in the economy to bring in their investments into Nigeria, buy treasury bills, invest in the Nigerian stock market, or Nigerian bonds, as the case may be, and then we get the dollars that they bring. It will increase our reserves and provide liquidity to our foreign exchange market and provide the stability required for Niger Naira dollar exchange rate. That's basically what is, is doing. And it's all akin, aligned, aligned to the CBN role. CBN principal role is to provide you know, money, you know, fiscal, uh, money stability, uh, financial stability in the, in, the, in, the, in the economy, exchange rate, interest rate, which again will have some salutary impact on inflation. And that has it been the work of the current CBN governor since he came into, into play. So that's basically, this is what he's trying to explain, that, um, uh, and that this, his policies has led to the attraction of foreign portfolio investors into the economy. And has he achieved it? Before he came into the, into the, into the system, Interest rates in Nigeria were very, literally, literally very low, lower double digits, 10, 12 percent. But it moved most of those rates up now to the early 20s. Very attractive for foreign portfolio investors. And with a certainty, near certainty in the FX market, they bring in here and look at Naira interest rates at 25 percent. When at the majority of investments, they can take it back. And that's basically what he's saying. And that has flushed some money into the Nigerian FS market. So a clearer understanding of the framework and the dynamics at play here mm -hmm. gives, you know, leads to that comfortability. But mm -hmm. I want to juxtapose its position against, let's say, Fitch Ratings, which just very recently expressed reservations over the CBN's regulatory direction, of course, suggesting that, you know, these recent measures may impede, you know, economic trajectory. Are there any merits to this position? Okay, the, the, the Fitch rating or Fitch report made strong allusion do you recall that we were told that about seven billion dollars uh, were uh, of the forwards, you know, were unremitted, were met uh, at maturity, 
and Central Bank appointed you know auditors to come and review those you know um, 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 forward FS positions, and they found out that 2.2 billion dollars of those did not you know pass the threshold for CBN to meet um, 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 the, the demand. And so they said they canceled those ones. So the, the fish rating is alluding to that, that those demands were made by, you know, joining Nigerian companies and worked, they worked with Central Bank of Nigeria, no matter what, whoever, it, who was the governor or who the uh, staff were, but they were accepted by the system, the Central Bank, and then CBI cannot, down the line, actually, you know, um, you know, um, you know, say then that they cannot meet those um, um, demands. That's basically along the line that so the, that, that they're discussing. And and then no matter how good a bank is, you in Nigeria, you cannot really have a rating that is above the rating of um, your Nigerian economy. So whereas the top Nigerian banks have strong individual ratings, their ratings must be moderated by the overall outlook of the Nigerian economy, sure. which is coming coming from FX instability. Remember, high inflation rates still, and inflation at uh, 32, 33, uh, food inflation at 40%. So there's still a lot of high instability in the, in the system. And then that's why, you know, people are talking about the fact that even the CBN governor talked about it during this his interview. Yes, yes, especially and, around yes, inflation. Yeah, yeah. He said that the rate, next yeah. multi-policy committee meeting, you know, you know, we'll try to guess, you know, what they're going to do. We have a feeling that they're still grabbing, going you know, to try to pull back inflation by increasing the monetary policy rate. But you see, I'm of that school of thought that says that the bullets in the, the bullet, number of bullets in the gun of the Syrian government are limited. After a time, your monetary policy tools, your bullets will finish and you will not have anything to fire again. Will you move the uh, uh, cash reserve ratio to 100%? It's what five now. What else can you do? Right. So that is why the fiscal side has to work together with the Central Bank of Nigeria to make sure the issues leading to inflation are moderated. Right. In we, principally security. We certainly need that, that harmonization in there yeah. um, to get that understanding. But let's now look at Nigerian Labour Congress. And the trade union Congress is threatening to picket power sector. In fact, they've already started yeah, that. We see in Abuja, that the regulatory that commission. That yeah. The power sector you know, uh, has come to be a sick baby for the nation. And um, it's amazing that you know, our generation will come and pass and the issue of power, you know, um, um, lack of power in Nigeria will continue. I don't know whether it's our children or grandchildren that will uh, get the get soccer, get the freedom. It's very sad that all my, how many years on this earth, is it's always been uh, power problems. Now, government did well then, and we said the private sector could manage things better. And that's why the, 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 the election took place, and then assets were sold. Uh, but just like most things, not only in Nigeria, a lot of times when you do a study of asset sell in third world, you find that the first people who grab it usually are not the, the, techn tech the technical companies, usually the politicians, the army generals, and so on, who have the network and, and connections actually get these assets. So the required issues, the financial capacity and te technical capacity, most of the companies that get the purchases, um, asset sales, do not have those. And that's what Nigeria has suffered. And de despite all the amount of money the central bank has poured in, government has poured in into the sector, uh, that hasn't been any increase in capacity. You know, your house, I don't think that your general usage has stopped. Even despite all the band A and band B thing, you know, nothing has improved. It's a constant. It's a constant, yeah. So that, that's, the, that's the issue. But I mean, you know, listening to labor people is always very interesting. And the solution always like, you know, it's either left or right. You know, we should unwind the the power cells and then go back to the beginning where you know every government is managing everything. I don't think that's the solution. I believe that um, just the government has been brave enough to remove fuel subsidy. They have to do serious things, you know, and you know work with the power those who are body assets and and really right right act to them and make sure they do the right things and right investments. Because government is still a shareholder in most of these companies. You know, that's for me, that's what it is. But everybody has the right to protest. But the issue is that the solution is not in, like, 
unwinding the whole presentation that has been done already in the power sector. There's a lot more to be done. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, we ha I wish we had more time to go into forex remittances, yeah. but of course we have Sanusi Garba giving some assurances to these grievances, and let's just hope mm -hmm. that uh, we, this will yield uh, results indeed on in the long term. Many thanks, Mr. Chikamboni, for joining Thank us on the Global Business Report. Thank you.